but measure him by his, or as you would with any other public servant, by what they do. For somebody there before him, the last administration, how much did she get? Um, there's somebody uh, in, in London, how much is, uh, are they getting? And uh, what you would have to do if you wanted to say that uh, what my brother is receiving is outrageous, you'd have to compare it uh, to others within Grenada and within the region as well. And so not to play politics with, with, with it. Before we go, of course, uh, your, your, your brother, uh, who is uh, Grenada's Council General, uh, to uh, the United Arab Emirates, with, uh, which is headquartered in uh, Dubai, uh, has been in the political news lately, uh, owing to uh, allegations that perhaps uh, a lot of uh, what is funded for, for th that the state is funding for uh, uh, his stay there uh, is, is essentially overinflated. Uh, do you have any comments on, uh, we, we, of course, we, we are in an age of talking a lot about fiscal responsibility and things like that. Is that a conversation that you have been privy to, sir? So the short answer is no. And the long answer is that I found out, uh, you know, a lot of what is being said is being said by, by people who take a political stance. Uh -huh. um, and, and while it is important, uh, while, you know, as a public servant, citizens of the country has a right have a right to look into the, the details of jobs uh, what they do what they're supposed to do are they fulfilling their duties as government has that same right and uh, what they're being paid to do and how are they being remunerated so yes that is fine um, but when people try to link it uh, and, and, and make politics out of it, um, you know, that's when it becomes dirty. And uh, that's when it becomes uh, personal and so on. With regard to his remuneration, I didn't know, as God is my witness, what his remuneration was. I mean, I don't speak to him about how much he could work in for. Uh, I don't speak to anybody about that, you know? Um, so that's a private thing, but, mm -hmm. I found out about it when I saw it. Uh, so it was forwarded to me. That's when I found out. When the rest on, of the on, 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 on the program. On that on the program. On that yeah. particular program. On uh -huh. That particular program. That's mm -hmm. when I found out, and then I saw it on another program, and that's when I said, "Okay, well, I guess that's what it is because they are reporting that over and over." Um, mm -hmm. So, so if that were to be an O and R thing, meaning if it was that, oh, this is outrageous. How could they do something like that? Mm -hmm. there's no comparison so the person that was there before there was somebody there before him the last administration how much did she get um, there's somebody uh, in, in london how much is are they getting um, mm -hmm. as compared because london is a is an expensive city to live in as dubai is so is new york so you can kind of, kind of compare uh, to, to just say something in a vacuum as to why they couldn't get somebody else and so on. i think he presented his resume, uh, which I didn't even know that he did at the time. Um, and even when he was uh, going to school, I remember him saying that he wanted to do political science. And I was, I said to him, why? Why would you want to do that? Politics is filled with so much, you know, misalignment and confusion and lies, you know, okay. generally. And that's why honest people and good people tend to shy away from politics. Not that they are not good politicians, but generally, um, you know, these people who are saying certain things are paid. They're being paid. And, uh, you know, as a Muslim, um, I'm taught that there are two muscles of flesh in the body. And if you guard them, paradise will be made easier for you. And the Prophet of Islam was asked, what are they? And he said, what is between your mouth, your jaws, and what your jaw, and what is between your legs? If you guard those two, paradise would be made easier for you meaning that there are some people that um you know is it really okay you mention it they can look into it but measure him by his or as you would with any other public servant by what they do um you know measure him by his fruits and what he brings and adds uh, finally what i would say about that is that 
any ambassadorial or, or relationship, any foreign service relationship, um, it takes time to build. And so when you're dealing with people abroad, especially since um, by his faith, or my faith as well, our faith, we are Muslim. And most of the people that are from that region are also Muslim. And so being able to break down barriers and to greet them in their language, even though we are not Arabs and we've never been there, right? Uh, we, we don't have family or anything there, any connections. But going there, you know how to greet them. You know what is what are the do's and don'ts and all of these different things. So it breaks down a lot of barriers. So the opportunity for building relationships is automatically greater. I'll give you one example. Um, as you ask this question, it comes to mind that it says in the in the Quran, in our religious text, that men are the protectors and maintainers of women. Men are charged with the responsibility of protecting and maintaining women. Which means that, yes, a woman could work, my wife works, and many professional women professional work. But men, they have the option. Men don't have that option. So when you are in a society that the men of that society are male-dominated, just from a standpoint of uh, relating to them, it is easier for him as a male to be able to do so doesn't have to be him i'm just saying this is so you, to have to give you an understanding of how the society thinks so uh, with regard to you know what has been said in the media and, um, and bringing it to light and that it's it's a big find and so on that is for the government and the people to decide i'm not here to play politics i'm not a politician mm -hmm. i didn't ask for anybody to vote for me and um, I represent the private sector. Everything is for our time. I will do so as long as I can be a benefit to the private sector. And then I'll go back to do what I know how to do. Um, and he studied in that area. He applied for it. He got through with it. Um, and uh, so there are some, some are, are saying that, you know, we are, uh, the family supported the, the NDC government. In, uh, I like to speak plainly. And I like to bring everything to the fore. So, it's not, so there's, there's no ambiguity. There's no underhand business and no ambiguity. So mm -hmm. some are saying that and saying, oh, that is why he was appointed there. Well, I don't think that we have the money to support the entire NDC campaign, even if we wanted to. And secondly, I can speak to um, my uh, father, for example. He is involved. Um, with the NDC. And he's involved with the NDC because he was involved with the NNP at one time. When I was a boy, I remember John Watts, chairman of the NNP party, used to come home by us and sit with us and discuss NNP objectives and programs. And so my father was, uh, was like many others, Dr. Bert Raffitt and some of the others that have since been pushed aside. My father was um, part and parcel of the NNP early in the early days. And then for, for whatever reasons known to him, um, I remember when what I could recall is when, when we were in Greenbridge as a business person, and we were there for 17 years, and then we were told we had to move. And we were not, um, uh, we were not seriously uh, given uh, alternatives. Um, you know. So we had to find a piece of land which was on the opposite side of the road. We bought it from a guy. Then when the NDC government came in, the government said that, you know, you, you didn't have the, the man didn't have the authority to sell that land um, because a certain time had to elapse because it was government land that was sold to him. So now you have to pay the state. And under that NDC government, it was revalued and we paid. So those who'd like to do research could do research on that too and see how much we paid. So that piece of land that we occupy now in town for our business, we bought twice, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't see that, uh, what are the favors that they speak of? I mean, when I started to do this job and I was asked to, to be a senator, uh, many of my friends called and said, you know, oh, wow, you would do, you're getting a big salary and you know, you're getting this and you'll get that and so on. And when I saw my first salary was 800 and something dollars, and I have great respect for those senators 
who have served before me for that kind of salary. You have to want to do it. You can't live on that. Yeah, the compensation is low. To right. serve in this and then, so why don't you think about that? You know, mm -hmm. so and then, uh, then after the, the, this current prime minister raised it, I think it's 3,000 something now, right? Yes. But the point is compared to the region, it's still low. And uh, what you would have to do if you wanted to say that uh, what my brother is receiving is outrageous, you'd have to compare it uh, to others within Grenada and within the region as well. And so not to play politics with it. Hi everyone. Thanks for checking out the Bud Report social media pages. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch our weekly live show, follow our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can catch repeat episodes on Wednesdays at 4 and 5 p.m. respectively on CRFM Radio and GBN TV in Grenada. We are also viewed on Sundays at 8 p.m. on WPG10 throughout the Caribbean. Thanks for watching.